Okay, this is the MPC Electronics MPC-1. I did a video with sounds and demoing the sounds with no talking, and this is going to be more just an overview of what I know about it and um, some technical stuff about it as well that I found um, along the way. So there wasn't too many of these sold. Um, by all accounts, there was between 700 and 800 sold. I am the second um, owner of this unit. I picked it up uh, fairly recently from a gentleman, Brian Mackey, who had a band with his brother, Gary, in the early 80s. And in 1983, they had a record deal with a band called Actor. Um, and at that time, he went to the NAMM show and uh, met the guys from MPC Electronics, was interested in it. He's a drummer and lead singer of the band, and he was interested in incorpor incorporating electronic drums into his setup. And um, he got set up as a distributor um, and bought three or four of these, kept one for himself, and set and sold the rest. So fortunately, um, he's, he's had the same sort of studio and office all these years. And um, after all this time, geez, it must be 35 years later, um, he still has the unit with everything it came with. So it might be a good opportunity for people to see what this thing actually came with when it was purchased originally. So it has um, the owner's manual and a warranty card. And this particular unit had sort of an addendum to the manual. It had a tape with some of the preset patterns on it called MPC Songs, tape one. And this is what that looks like. I'm not sure how well you can see this on the camera and how the autofocus is, but hopefully it's pretty good. It came in this hard case. It's got the bottom half here. I will possibly show the top half in a second, but the key for the case so you could lock it has never even been opened. Looks like there's two keys in here, and this masking tape is in really rough shape. Got the key. It's got a foot switch. This was the original foot switch it would come with. There was a computer interface for the Sinclair ZX81, or the um, US version was like the Timex 1000, They're basically the same thing. So it had this computer interface. Looks like that. And it has the um, uh, VHF for the interface for the monitor. I don't have the uh, Timex 1000, like, couldn't find it here when I was getting ready to do this, um, but it has a Timex 1000 and it has this extra RAM module so you could um, program it from the computer, which I have not done to this point. It also came with these rubber sleeves. It is very loud. My um, sound demo was straight to the audio interface with no um, talk over or anything, so you were hearing nice, clean, no no room sound, no room mics. So, so it's very clacky and very loud, and it came with these rubber sleeves, which is interesting. And it came with this splitter, which I'm hiding back here. It's a Y cable. The main output is a stereo jack, and if you want to split it to two channels instead of just grounding one of the channels and, and going to one channel you could use the splitter and that's it came with with that at the time that's the one so i'll move this stuff away so yeah the mpc one it's actually pretty clever um i'm a musician and an engineer and um, i design um, synthesizers sequencers drum machines type stuff and it's pretty easy for me to figure out what's going on here just by opening it up and looking at it so if you are an engineer synth technician or whatever it'll be pretty easy to see what's going on and it's rather neat that they didn't just rip circuitry from Roland and Simmons and in the like um, it uses a little bit of everything from from here and there it's similar circuitry to those other early 80s analog late 70s early 80s analog drum machines but it uses like the minimum components to 
to, to do what it needs to do because it's a pretty big unit um, but they did a good job keeping the cost down and keeping the component count down and having a nice musical range it's sort of a one trick pony like all of these electronic drum um, systems were back then meaning you don't have that much control um, as you saw in the audio demo uh, part one but it does have a good amount of control and is Roland-esque in that there's no bad range. There's no like range of, of controls that is, is really annoying and completely unused, you know, not useful. It sounds good. The kick sounds good. The snare sounds good. The hi-hats sound pretty good. They're really cool. Tom's pretty good. Um, the clap is okay. It doesn't have a lot of, uh, or it doesn't have any um, parameters to adjust. But the cymbal sounds pretty good. And um, this is all dry. You know, the audio sample I did was dry. I haven't even done anything with it. And it sounds pretty good for that low components count. There's no custom ICs. There's no CEM ICs, um, VCA ICs, no synth, synth on the chip ICs, which some of like the SDS stuff would start to use a little bit later on to make things easier. It's very simple. There's not even any OTAs from what I recall from being inside here. Um, there's probably less than 20 transistors in the unit in all and that's for triggering you know generating the trigger pulses short pulses long pulses um you know gates and that kind of thing it's a minimum um that's needed in here decay envelopes very basic so all it uses is op amps um a few transistors capacitors resistors that's it there's not much in there so it's pretty cool the computer portion of it, the, the ability to be able to record uh, patterns and play them back in a sequence is very basic um, and I've had to sort of figure out what's going on there just by the nature of making sure the machine works when I got it. And there was some minor problems when I got it. So yes, the main thing you got to look out for if you have one of these is the nickel metal hydride battery. Um, like a lot of other older um, synths and, and drum machines and everything really in the world in the late 70s, early 80s, they, uh, they had a rechargeable battery, a charging circuit to try to make it last longer and keep your RAM content saved for longer. They'll use a, a, a NICAD or a nickel metal hydride and they can leak electrolyte and it kind of fumes out almost and starts to corrode traces on the CPU board. And this is no exception. This one had some minor damage that was um, not too bad to get on top of. But if you have one, open it up. You're going to have to pull the entire thing. Um, there's two main PCB assemblies. There's the analog board and the CPU board. You have to take them all and kind of move them away from the panel. The battery's on the other side. What I've done now is I've moved the battery to the bottom and installed it a bit away from the PCB so that you can just replace it easily by pushing the, the front lid of the unit up. For this particular unit, I did replace it with nickel metal hydride again. Um, it has a Varda mem pack. They st still sell those as of today, as of when I'm recording this video. You could potentially go in there when you have the board down, take out the charging circuit, which is basically a diode and a resistor, and use like a large capacity lithium battery, non-rechargeable, and just stick that on the back side so it'll last you know, 10, 15, 20 years or more, and then you won't have to worry about it. But anyway, while having some miscellaneous connections that were, you know, oxidized or not working 100% and some damage from the battery, I sort of had to reverse engineer um, what's going on in here, and it's, it's really not too bad. But I did document it, and I am going to share it. I may actually put in this video some, some pictures. So what you've got here is you have eight triggers, eight pad pads to trigger things, whether it's a, um, a, a drum voice or an accent or, 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 or what have you. Um, and then on the analog voice side, you have 10 analog voices. You've got the bass. Let me see if I can actually make some more sound. Kick, snare open and closed hat, toms, cymbal,
in that clap. So you can play them live anytime. And you have the ability to sequence into um, the unit itself. It only holds four patterns, so you can record four patterns and then you can sequence those patterns into what's called a song um, when you're done. But it's very basic. So to get a little bit technical, when you play a pad, like I said, your trigger goes straight to the analog voice, but when you're in record mode, your trigger is also captured on the data bus um, and recorded into memory. So there's eight pads um, that can be captured into this CPU. Um, I've basically traced out everything that it's doing and like I said, I may put this up um, here so you can see it. It may try to share it in a different way as well um, with a PDF file or something, but basically on the way in, you've got an LS244, um, you know, tri-state buffer, very typical at the time, everything would use them. So then when you're ready to write, you enable that LS244, you capture the input data, and there's no sort of encoding or decoding because there's only eight pads and there's eight, it's an eight bit CPU. It's an NEC D780. It's basically a Z80, same thing. Um, so it's an eight bit CPU. You've got eight pads, so there's no encoding or anything like that to try to get more uh, input signals captured. It just has one bit per pad. So you capture it on the way in. And on the playback side, uh, there's an octal latch. Um, I, what is it, a, a 273, LS273, I think, is the old, old school um, octal latch, um, where it then comes back and goes to the trigger circuits for the corresponding voice. So it's really that basic. And again, there's no multiplexing on that side either, just the eight triggers. And then there's um, CN1, connector one, has I believe 20 wires on it, and both the, the capturing of the triggers and the playback of the triggers back to the analog voice are on that main CN1 um, connector. There's another connector called, I believe, P2 and P3, which is very obvious when you open it up, and those are the actual piezo inputs from the pad. Each pad has a, a plus and minus, like a signal and ground, from the actual piezo to capture it into the unit. So the unit is actually velocity sensitive. Um, on the direct trigger of the drum. Um, so that's pretty cool. So if you're playing it live, you can get some, some nuance there. For recording though, obviously, since it's very simple, you, uh, you only have one velocity level and you have accent. So you basically have two levels of um, velocity. I have noticed when recording, if you hit, like, like right now, you know, I'm getting pretty good, like a lot of dynamics there. And when I hit it light, I get a lot of sound. When you're recording, because of the way it's, um, uh, creating a input trigger out of your, your, your hitting the pad. If you hit it lightly, it's not going to capture it. The computer doesn't capture it. It doesn't quite hit that threshold to, to, to trigger or to record those hits. So that's one thing that I found that was interesting to be aware of. So when you go and record this thing, let me clear that. I have noticed all the quarter notes have accents already. So if I hit this light, That's accented. Now, if I go like off the quarter note, okay, you can hear it. One's louder than the other. One's accented, one's not. This is called auto accent and it can be disabled. It's in the addendum page that came with the user's manual. Basically, it'll add accents to all the beat. But to record accents, it's actually this pad here. You can actually, I believe it doesn't say, it actually doesn't. It actually doesn't say it anywhere. You have to read the manual. But this pad where it says clap, it's going to play a clap 
when it's directly triggering the analog voice, but this is actually recording accents. So any step So now you hear all those snares are loud. So that's how you record accents. So you cannot record Tom 1 and Tom 2. You can only play it live because there's only um, the ability to play back eight triggers. And there's only one analog switch in here that allows you to play back the cymbal or the clap. There's no way to switch. There's no switch between Tom 1, Tom 2, Tom 3, Tom 4, or anything like that. So in record mode, you're generally only on this bottom selection here where it says Tom 3, Tom 4, Symbol Clap. If you have this button up here and you go to record, the first two pads aren't going to record anything. You can play live. It's not going to do anything. So you put it on that selection there. You'll notice the manual even tells you to just leave it on Tom 3, 4, Symbol Clap. So there... Now you can get Tom 3, Tom 4, the cymbal slash clap. Say it's clap is selected, so there we go. You get that. And then accents here. That's basically the sequencer. Like I said, I have not used the computer yet, so um, I have not even read about it. Um, I know how it interfaces, but I don't know what further capability it adds. Um, but I do know from the front panel here, you can sequence the patterns that you record. You can external sync from DinSync. Um, I have tried that, it does work. Um, there is the ability to change the tempo from the front. And here it getting faster and slower. That's basically it. Um, so just like any other sort of older unit, um, you want to get in and get out. You don't want to be inside there messing around with it. It's got some direct soldered connection. Otherwise, it's pretty good. It's got some kludgy stuff going on. I may open this in, in show, but um, there's some uh, trim pots that were added on later for the Tom Decay, and it's just soldered on this little board back here. It's pretty bad. Um, there's some felt washers that are sort of hand cut and go in certain places because I've noticed if you put this board back in here, you don't have a felt washer in the exact place on top of a brass standoff. It'll short a trace from a tom circuit to the casing and you'll drop a tom sound um, or something like that. And even just the connectors in general, it's it's just getting old. So you don't, you don't want to be playing around with it too much. You don't want to go replacing things in mass just because if it's not failing. But I think that's it for the MPC-1. That's a pretty cool unit.